society, whether it is the corporate sector, whether it is the general public, whether it is students or whether it is faculty members. And we are very happy to say that we have got a very good response for the webinars. Um, the entire objective is to keep learning and to keep reinventing ourselves uh, as we are in this period of lockdown. Because when things reopen, we want to get back with the right foot forward. Having said that, who better to take us through reinventing dynamism, a new perspective on things than uh, Mr. Vikash Shrodkar. Uh, Mr. Vikash Shrodkar is a fellow of the IIM Calcutta and has served more than 34 years in various capacities in the HR field and is a very reputed and recognized name in HR. Uh, having retired from General Motors, he has set up his own firm called Basel Consultancy with a couple of uh, other people and has been successfully running training programs through it. Um, he, uh, among his many achievements, what he prides himself most on is being awarded at the hands of APJ Abdul Kalam for his contributions and the company's initiatives uh, in the light of HR. So without taking much more of your time, I welcome Mr. Vikash Shrodkar and welcome all of you for this very, very interesting webinar. Um, I can claim it is interesting because I've, I'm sitting through it the third time. Okay, and for a teacher to listen the third time to anything, it has to be more than interesting. It has to be engaging. And I hand it over to Vikas. Let us all sit back and enjoy the afternoon. A small request, please keep your um, phones or laptop or devices, whatever you're using on mute because the audio coming through multiple channels disturbs everybody. Also keep, if you want to keep your video on, you're most welcome to do it. If you would prefer it off, you can do that. However, you can keep asking questions on the chat, posting your comments. And at the end, I'm sure Vikas would be happy to answer any questions. So you can ask them directly or for those of us who, are, who prefer the chat mode, we can keep putting it in the chat and I can assure you I would be moderating it. Yeah, so thank you Vikas, hand, handing over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Preeti. Uh, really happy to be here and this afternoon to have an engaging talk with all of you, because this lockdown has been challenging for everybody. And for people like us who have always been running around and being busy, the biggest challenge is of ennui. Just sitting at home, that is a very, very big difficulty. So that is something which uh, uh, this webinar and such activities kill. So I have been attending a lot of webinars. I've been addressing quite a few webinars, but that is mainly so that one feels engaged and challenged. So what I'm going to present to you is literally one side of the argument. The other side of the argument is in your mind. Please challenge what I'm saying. Please question what I'm presenting to you. I would feel all the better if we are able to cross mental swords and really challenge each other. And that way, we'll be able to understand more on this concept of VUCA. So, uh, Minoti, can you please enable uh, me to share my presentation? So can you people see my, the first slide? Okay, great. So I'm going to talk to you. I'm just trying to go into the slideshow mode. Yes. I'm going to talk to you about VUCA, a new perspective. VUCA is a word which has been around for a fairly long period of time. Uh, it was after the uh, Cold War that the uh, sort of American um, 
armed forces people came up with this concept of VUCA. VUCA stands for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. Indeed, how can we not say that it is, it is volatile, it is very uncertain, it is very complex, and it is ambiguous. But what I'm going to do today is really tell you a little different perspective of VUCA. Because if you just think it is volatile, uh, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, then that becomes very scary. You really don't know how you are going to move forward. So we are going to have a new perspective on this VUCA. So that is what will be the talk. Just want to mention before I go ahead that this presentation is made for you and I'm more than happy to share it with you. On the last slide, my email ID is there. Please write it down and write me an email and I will share the presentation with you. I will not allow Minoti or Preeti to share it with you how gratis. Utna effort to aapko lena padega ki write a small email to me and I am more than ready to share it with you. So, uh, my family knows that I uh, have put a lot of stock on humor and hence I am beginning with this slide. This is Peanuts cartoon where Lucy is asking Charlie Brown, what surprises you the most about this coronavirus? And Charlie Brown replies that it has done what no woman has been able to do. It has cancelled all the sports, it has shut down all the bars and kept the men at home. Really, from the time I uh, sort of started going to college and started going, I think it is the first time that 70 odd days I have been at home. I don't know what my wife has to say about that but it has been a totally different life. And that is all thanks to Corona. This COVID virus is something which has really shaken us up. To explain the concept to you, I have want to remind you of the story of the sleeping beauty. When the sleeping a child was born to the king and queen, um, who later on became the sleeping beauty, when the small child was born, Queen arranged a baby shower and she invited all the uh, fairies who were there in that uh, kingdom. There were, she invited 12 fairies and all of them reached for the baby shower and they all blessed the baby. Somebody blessed her with beauty, somebody blessed her with love, somebody blessed her with um, happiness, somebody blessed her with peace. But what had happened was that there was one thirteenth fairy which the queen had not invited because her whole character, her whole demeanor was supposed to be of a very tough lady. She was not a very nice person and hence the queen had thought keep her out of it. But this fairy obviously great gate crashed into the party. For that baby shower, she landed up over there and she gave a curse to the small baby. Instead of a blessing, she gave a curse and she said that you will die very early. Everybody was shocked. Everybody was very, very unhappy. So, when they were unhappy, everybody was stunned. That time, the twelfth fairy, who had not yet given her blessing, said that no, she will not die, but she will be in hibernation. She will be asleep for a fairly long period of time. So that's how the Sleeping Beauty story is and I'm sure all of us have read it as children so I'm not going to tell you that story. But to me, COVID and the coronavirus is the 13th ferry who has great crashed into our 2020 party. When we wished each other Happy New Year on 31st of December 2019, none of us had thought that come March our life will be very, very different. But it has been very, very different. So literally, you can give a new interpretation to the concept of BC and AD. I would say that BC is now before Corona and AD is after the disturbance, the destruction and the devastation which Corona has wrought. All of us know that this pandemic is of the largest proportion ever experienced. Every human being on the world, on the earth, seven billion people all are affected 
never has there been a pandemic of such large magnitude and this is what has happened and it has brought in its background disturbance destruction and devastation so we really need to understand that the hookah world has changed very very radically so that's where this quotation from uh, charles dickens and i'll uh, leave it on for a minute for you to read it through that it was the best of times this is how charles dickens begins that famous book the tale of two cities it was the best of times and it was the worst of times please go ahead and read it and see what the last line says so charles dickens says that the period was so like the present times because this is really the best of times and the worst of times it is a spring of hope but it is also a winter of despair covid has ensured that business as usual is dead we cannot go back to the world as we knew in the past that's why this new world is being coined it is being called the new normal that is something which is going to happen but what it means is that our lives whether personal or professional will never be the same as we move forward so that's where i want to uh, take you to the concept which nasim taleb had brought about the black swan the black swan is a metaphor for something which is a rare thing which happens something which suddenly happens and it changes the way in which the whole world is going forward and whatever is happening in the world normally we think that all swans are white but suddenly a black swan appears and it really changes our entire perspective that is really what has happened with covid but there more recently nasim taleb has also come up with another book which is called anti fragile he says that in this situation we need to be anti fragile and we will talk more about this anti fragile concept as we move forward so i will not spend much time on that but i will remind you what nasib has also said that the wise one is the one who knows that he cannot see things far away priti told you that i do some consulting and i work with some organizations even now in this lockdown period so people have understood that the two year three year five year horizons are all dead they are gone there's no point in thinking about that you need to just plan for the next one year or the next six months and how are we you going to handle the situation over there one person put it very very bluntly to me he said vikas the only goal and objective i have in 2020 is to be alive that's what has happened people are not worrying about the business because business we can get and do later but just now we need to be safe and we need to be healthy so that is what has happened which is something which has drastically changed us and so this word does apply hookah word it's volatile it's uncertain it's complex and it is ambiguous who can deny that but as i told you this was a perspective of in the uh, 1987 which the army had come about but there is a new version of vuka i think it tallies with the new normal because we need to move out of the situation and do something better so the what is the new uh, vuka v is vision u is understanding c is clarity and a is agility so we will spend a little time on understanding each of these elements vision understanding clarity and agility and i will try to tell you each of these illustrated with stories so that you will not get bored i'm sure you will enjoy that is why possibly preeti is hearing this presentation for the third time so what is this new vuka firstly it is uh, thought about by bob johansen who is from the institute of the future uh, and what he says is v for vision keep the big picture in front of you u understanding what is understanding create security for people so that they can get on with their jobs that's what we need to think about c for clarity clarity and focus and a for agility because you will have to face change and do things very very differently so this is the new hookah so before we get on to the concept of vision 
I want to first uh, ask, what is your thinking? What do you think? How important is vision? I'll request here, uh, Minoti, to launch the poll first question, which is, is vision important for success in an organization or even in our own lives? And how important is it? So, Minoti, can you please launch the and ask people to vote and we will look at that result and then we will move forward. Let's give it half a minute for people to vote. And tell me when you are ready with the result and then we will move on. Sure. Just give it some 15 seconds more because 80% of the people have voted. It's okay, Minoti. You can show okay. the result. We are looking for indicators and directions. Sure. You don't need to wait for everybody to vote. Okay. So I'm ending uh, the poll and I'm sharing the results with you. Here are the results. Okay. So 50% of the people say that it is totally required, 100%. Without vision, we cannot move ahead. And people feel 75% important is another 40%. So you can see here itself that about 90% of the people feel that vision is very important. About 20% feel that it could be sort of marginally important, but this data shows that people mostly feel that vision plays a very, very important role in success in the organization. So let's talk about vision. So here is a quotation from the Bible. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables so that he may run that readeth it. Vision is finally inspiring. That is why 50% feel that it is 100% required for success. So if to illustrate the concept of vision, I want to tell you a story. This is a story about a traveler. It was a hot day and he was traveling on foot. This was set in the old times. And he was traveling on foot and he was walking, walking, walking. Hard sun. He was tired. He wanted to rest, but he had far to go. Suddenly, he saw a tree in front of him and he thought that why not I rest under this tree and take a little rest and have some water and eat some food that would be nice. So he sat under the tree. When he sat under the tree, he said, thought to himself, oh, I wish there was some cold water available. And suddenly, a pitcher of cold water appeared in front of him. He was surprised, but he was so thirsty. He quickly drank that water. And after drinking the water, his thirst is satiated. He thought, I wish there was some hot, nice food available. Suddenly, a fully well laid out uh, meal appeared in front of him. And he started eating that food. Having have finished his thirst and having had food, he thought that he would like to rest. But Aju Baju mein patthar the, zameen thi. So he thought, I wish there was a lovely bed on which I could rest my head and my back. Suddenly a bed appeared. You know how human beings are. Their wants are never ended. So after the bed appeared and he lay, lay down on the bed, the next thought he had was, I wish there were some two nice good looking ladies who were pressing my feet and two other ladies who were fanning me as I take my rest. Suddenly four ladies appeared over there who started pressing his feet, who started fanning him. How was all this happening? Because he was sitting and sleeping under the Kalpa Vruksha. 
so he fell into a slumber with all that and as he was sleeping he suddenly thought oh i am in so much of happiness and peace but i hope suddenly a lion does not come and eat me up and since it was the kalpa vruksha what happened immediately a lion came and ate him up and gobbled him up so this kalpa vruksha or kalpa taru as it is called or kalpa droma this is there in the hindu tradition this story <coughs> is told in the hindu tradition in the jain tradition also in the buddhist tradition and what can we learn from this he had everything but he lost his mind he caught caught up in the deluge of emotions positivity turned to negativity his negative emotions created havoc because the lion appeared through that so what it means to me is that vision is important but we have to remain positive just as in the present time covid is bad but we have to be positive even when covid is there and a lot of things are troubling you you are sitting at home you may not be getting the food that you desire you may not be able to go to the restaurants that you want or go out and see movies remember everything is not cancelled the sun is not cancelled the spring is not cancelled our relationships with our family are not cancelled love is not cancelled reading is not cancelled devotion is not cancelled music is available imagination is there kindness you can always show to everybody and conversations can be there hope is not cancelled at all so for vision i want to say that keep a positive vision and think about how you will be able to come out of it with a positive hope so with this let's go to the second point which is understanding and to begin to talk about understanding i want to request munauti to launch the second poll which is in your opinion what is the most important reason why understanding is necessary is it for better team working is it for gaining acceptance of ourselves and others is it for smooth functioning or is it for better decision making it may be difficult for you you may think that all of them apply but still try to think which is the most important one according to you and please uh, vote for that let's see what results come out from the vote of and please it would be nice if everybody votes let's have a little more voting the first vote might have been difficult because it is a little new thing but i hope we will have more percentage of voting than the first one this time around so minoti let's close the vote in another 5 seconds let me begin the countdown we'll close it at 0 so 5 4 3 2 1 and let's close the poll and see the results okay great so better decision making 66% of the people feel that understanding is important for better decision making and implementation 30% feel for smooth functioning and operation gaining acceptance 20% and nearly 20% say team working i purposely thank you vinoti thank you very much i purposely chose these four alternatives because really if you think about it all four of them are important for understanding so for understanding my story for for you comes from norman vincent peel i don't know how many of you have heard this name of norman vincent peel he was the person who wrote the book the power of positive thinking and one day he was a very well known speaker very respected person in the america and he used to give public talks so one day he was going to give a public talk he entered the hall the hall was full of hundreds of people and as he walked down the aisle and went up to the stage he went to the stage and asked everybody it's nice to see all of you here but my question to you is do you have any problem 
or are you very happy? So what would happen? Obviously, everybody raised their hand. He said, if you have a problem, raise your hand. Everybody who was in the hall raised their hand. So then he asked the second question. Do you want a solution to your problem? Who doesn't want a solution to his problem? Again, everybody raised his hand. So then he said that while coming here, I crossed a place where everybody was lying down very peacefully. People were very relaxed. They did not seem to have a care in the world. And everybody was very peaceful. Would you like to go there? Again, obviously, who will? This looks like promised land, right? So everybody raised his hand. And then Norman Vincent Peale went on to say, two blocks away, when I was coming over here, I crossed a cemetery. In that cemetery, everybody was lying down. They did not have a care in the world and they were all very peaceful. Would you like to go there? <laughs> and nobody raised their hand, obviously. Because however difficult our life is, we still love life. So this is what is the message which um, our Norman Vincent Peale gave. And he told people that the problems that you face are a sign that you are alive. Never get worried and afraid of problems. They are not something to be scared of because they are the sign that you are alive, you are contributing, you are doing something, you are being challenged. Be happy with challenges. You know, I uh, am undergoing a course in philosophy from New Acropolis. And interestingly, their New Year wish to each other is not Happy New Year or all the best for the New Year. They say, I wish next year brings you many challenges. Why do they say that? Is that not negative? No. Because they recognize that if you are challenged, you will come up with solutions and you will become better. So problems are a sign that you are alive. Just develop your understanding. Develop a way to handle them. And that's where this Norman Vincent Peale's prayer of serenity comes to our guidance. He says, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. Courage to change the things that I can and wisdom to know the difference. All the difficulties which are there around me, I will not be able to change. But whatever I can change, I must change. That requires courage. And it also requires wisdom to know what I can change and what I cannot. And finally, you require serenity. You require magnanimity. You require peace to be able to accept what you cannot change. So I recently saw this photo on uh, WhatsApp and I wanted to give this as the last point for understanding. Apparently, this was declared as the photo of the year because a lioness with her small cub, newly born cub, was crossing the savanna. Savanna is the forest in Africa. It's a very dry area and Africa is also a very hot area. So the small cub was not able to take the heat. And it was tottering on its feet. It was not able to walk any further. What could that lioness do? She was helpless. Suddenly, help comes in the shape of the elephant. If you see the photograph more closely, you will see that in the trunk of the elephant, he has picked up the cub. And it seems that the uh, elephant carried the cub all the way to the nearest watering hole and set it down quiet near its mother so that it need not have to walk in the heat. I cannot think of a better example of understanding. I cannot think of a better uh, example of caring for each other. It's classic. And imagine, we call these as wild animals. I think that we have a lot to learn from such stories. And we need to improve our understanding, improve our compassion. So with this, let me request Minoki ma'am to launch the third poll as we move transit to the third point, which is clarity. So the question is on clarity. Today, do we have clarity in our work team and in our families? To what extent? Is it only to a small extent? Or clarity is there, but it could be improved? Is it 
clarity there to a significant extent or complete and perfect so manoti ma'am can you please launch the poll thank you i hope people are voting let us really see how people think of this importance of clarity so we will stop the poll after 5 seconds so i'll begin the countdown 5 4 3 2 1 and 0 so can we have the results minuti ma'am thank you it is there but it could be improved that's what majority of our people are saying it is there there is understanding but it could be improved so uh, sorry the clarity it is there but it clarity could be improved yes everything is not always clear and that is really the joy as you go forward you learn little bit more and move forward so 54% feel that it could be improved 38% feel that it is there to a significant extent i would feel that they are the lucky ones and the most lucky ones are obviously the 5% who have said it is complete and perfect they are very optimistic or they are in a very very good position in life whatever it is one thing which shows you this poll shows you is that uh, 93 94 95% of the people feel that clarity is important and required right 50 uh, 54 plus 38 plus 5% people feel that clarity is required thank you vinod ma'am i'll take it over and we'll move to the little bit deliberation on the clarity concept and in terms of clarity i want to share with you a old greek story of narcissus you may know some of you might have heard and read this story but narcissus was a very very beautiful handsome young man he was very proud of his beauty he was possibly the most beautiful person who was alive at that time he was once wandering in the forest and a nymph called echo fell in love with his beauty she started following him narcissus realized somebody is following so he asked who's there since she was echo the only answer he could hear is who's there soon echo caught up with narcissus and tried to embrace him but he brushed her aside and walked away apparently the story greek myth goes that echo felt so sad that she pined in his love and died in the forest which is why even today when you shout in the forests or you shout in the valleys you hear the echo what happened to narcissus the goddess of revenge who was nemesis was watching all this saw the inhuman and very bad behavior of narcissus so she decided to uh, punish him and she led him to a pool and apparently the myth goes that narcissus went down to drink water because he was thirsty and when he saw his reflection in the pool he fell in love with the reflection he did not realize that it is his own reflection he is not seeing somebody else but he is only seeing himself but he fell in love with that and he could not draw away his eyes from his own reflection he continued to look at it he could not move away and I, it is said that he pined for himself it was an unreachable dream right how will you love be able to uh, sort of get yourself as a cohort as a companion so he pined and died over there and that's how the myth goes that the flowers of narcissus which are the gold and white flowers were born this is a myth but it basically teaches us about clarity teaches us 
that we need to understand what is mine and what is there outside in the world. We should not confuse the two because otherwise we will get, we will nowhere and we may actually die like narcissists. The other story I want to share with you on clarity is of Tenali Ramakrishna. Some of you may have read and heard about Tenali. Tenali was like Birbal of the South. Uh, Vikramaditya, King Vikramaditya had Ashta Diggas in his uh, kingdom, uh, in his uh, uh, sort of palace. And these were eight courtiers who were known to be very, very smart, very, very intelligent. And Tenali was among one amongst them. It was the practice in those times that the kings, neighboring kings would throw a challenge. Vikramaditya was a very well-known king. So suddenly, one day, somebody from Vellore came to his uh, place, Vikramaditya's court, and said that I have a challenge for you. Please identify who is the prince of Vellore. Along with him, there were five very similar looking children. And they said that you have to identify who amongst these five is the prince of Vellore. So the uh, Vikramaditya turned to his courtiers and said, what are your suggestions? So one of the persons said, since he's a prince, he must have been seen earlier by somebody or the other. So let's find out from people which one is the prince. So the man who was accompanying the five children who had come from Vellore said that no, this, this uh, child has never appeared in the public, so nobody has seen him earlier. Somebody else said, let's look at his palms because there will be a royal fortune line on his palm. He was obviously a believer in palmistry. But again, the man said, no, you cannot touch him or you cannot look. Only by looking at that person, you need to identify. Somebody else said, let's ask him to talk. He will have a royal demeanor. Once we interview him one-on-one, -on -one, we'll be able to identify the prince. Again, they were told, no, you have to only ask, identify him by seeing. So Tenali Ram said, ask the, somebody from the court to go inside the kitchen and get something for the children to eat. So children ko kya denge? To andar ja ke koi ek laddu ki thali leke aaya. And when the laddu thali was brought, one one laddu was given to each of the children. Four of them accepted the laddu and started eating very happily. The fifth one just went on looking at that laddu. No reaction from him at all. And Tenali said that he is the prince. Why? Because he knows how to give. Being from the royal family, he knows how to give, but he does not know how to receive. So that's how Tenali solved this conundrum with clarity of thinking. Clarity of what to do and what not to do will actually give you away in terms of who you are and how you can solve issues. So we all need to develop clarity. This was another recent thing which I saw on WhatsApp. There was this uh, watermelon seller who was selling watermelons and he had this board. One watermelon for three, uh, three dollars, and three are available for ten dollars. So an MBA like you and me, you know, uh, you know what is MBA, right? MBA is mediocre but arrogant. MBA, mediocre but arrogant. We are all very arrogant as MBA. So this guy thought, let me say, not anybody else, me. I wanted to teach that watermelon fellow a lesson. So I went up to him and I said, give me one watermelon. He gave me one, paid him $3. Give me a second one. Second one, another $3. Third one, another $3. And then while turning to go, I thought I must tell that fellow how foolish he is. So I turned around and told the shopkeeper, look, you don't know business. I bought three watermelons, but I paid you only $9. Your Sign says $10 are required. So the man just smiled and he said, you know what? You are the hundredth person who has come to teach me and tell me. And in that process, he has bought three watermelons when he wanted only one. 
So who is the better businessman? Who has more clarity in thinking? Obviously, it was the watermelon seller and not the MBA like me. So with this, we come to the last element of VUCA, which is agility. So here, again, I will request Minoti ma'am to launch the poll. Uh, is agility required in today's times? Not required. It is good to have, but not must have. Would help to a large extent or most essential. Please vote. Let us see what people think about agility. Okay, countdown begins. Five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Minoti, ma'am, can we have the results? Okay, thank you. So 60% feel that agility would help to a large extent. And another 33% feel that it is most essential, can't do without. You are all as students learning statistics, so you know that 30% is a significant number. So, significant majority minority think that it is most essential, and another 60% feel that it would help to a large extent. Hardly 3% feel that it is not required at all. But in today's time, especially when we are faced with this VUCA world, where there are continuous challenges and things are happening, you know, agility is going to make play a very critical role because that is what will ensure whether we are able to face the changes which the VUCA world is throwing at us or not. To explain the concept of agility, I have this story for you from the Greek uh, times again. Uh, the person in the picture is Alexander. In India, we used to call him Sikandar. He was coming to overrun the entire Asia. He had started from Greece. He was coming forward. And he came to a city, a city of Phrygian Greeks. And he found that there was a bullock cart tied at the door, the main entrance to the city. And it was tied with what was called the Gordian knot. Because that city name was Gordia. Apparently, there was a uh, oracle had told that whoever comes first through the city walls should be made the king. And a bullock cart driver came in a bullock cart and he was made king of Mia Gordia. Since he became king because of the bullock cart, he had tied that bullock cart over there. And so that nobody should take away his luck, he had tied it with the Gordian knot. It was such a complex knot that many people had tried to unravel it, but it could not be unraveled. It was said by the oracles of Delphi that whoever unravels, whoever opens the Gordian knot will rule Asia. Alexander had actually started on this campaign. He wanted to rule Asia. He wanted to overrun Asia. And he was faced with this challenge. He was faced with this oracle that he needs to open the Gordian's knot and then only he can rule Asia. He, uh, uh, obviously, Alexander knew that many people before him had tried to unravel the knot and they had not succeeded, which is why the knot was still there. What did he do? He took out his sword and cut the knot into two pieces. As soon as he cut the rope, obviously the knot opened. And really, if you look at history, Alexander nearly ruled Asia. He came right up to India and it was only our Horus who pushed him back. And then because of health reasons, Alexander died in Asia Minor. Otherwise, he would have ruled the entire Asia. But the story I'm telling you 
for of this body and not is because the intractable problems require a different thinking which is what is brought to us by agility the second story i want to tell you about agility is the yudhishthir yaksha samvad those of you who have not read it i would really tell you that please do go and read it it's one of the most fascinating chapters which are there in the uh, mahabharata during the atnyatvas of the pandavas you know where they had to live for one year without being recognized they were in the forests and this story is at that time when they were in the forest and all the five pandavas were trying to hide and walk around from one place to another one day dharma who was the eldest he felt very thirsty and what he saw was that there was a beautiful pool of very cool water to which i could see so he was very tired so he rested and he told the youngest brother nakul to go and actually get water for him so nakul went for a long time he did not come back so then he sent sadev sadev went he also did not come back then it was bhim's turn bhim went bhim also did not return then it was arjuna's turn arjuna went he also did not return so finally yudhishthir decided to go and investigate what is happening so he came to the bank of the lake and he found all his four brothers lying dead he was very shocked and surprised how this could have happened so he went towards he said okay i will think about that let me drink water he went to drink water and suddenly a yaksha yaksha came out of the river of the uh, lake water and he said don't dare to drink the water i told your brothers also that this is my water and you will not drink it unless you answer my question but they tried to drink it without answering my question and that's why they are dead so yudhishthir being dharmaraj he was also known as dharmaraj he told the yaksha that i will not encroach on your rights this is your water i will fulfill your conditions ask me your questions whatever i can answer i will answer but without that without your satisfaction i will not drink the water so 100 questions were asked i am not going to tell you those 100 questions but they are very interesting please do go and read it so yudhishthir answered all those questions and the yaksha who was actually yama and those of you who know your history or i would say mythology will know that dharma was the son of yama dharma putra so that's why he was named dharmaraj so his own father was standing in front of him and he had answered all the questions so dharma said okay since you have answered all my questions i will give you one boon your four brothers are lying dead i will let you revive one of them you ask for one person's life and i will revive it so dharmaraj thought for a while and then said that please revive sahadev so yeah yama was very surprised he said look you are now going to go into battle battle mahabharata shuru hone wala hai so you should have asked for bhim you should have asked for arjuna who is the best yodha of that time instead of that you are asking for sahadev why are you asking for sahadev so dharmaraj gave the answer which really typifies him as a dharmaraj and shows the clarity of thinking which is the point we are talking yudhishthir said that i have asked for sahadev because i have two mothers the first three pandavas were born to kunti and sahadev and nukul were born to a second mother which was madri so he said kunti ka ek putra to zinda hai the other mother should also have one child alive which is why i asked for sahadev so yudhishthir uh, sorry the yaksha was the dharma uh, our uh, yama was so happy with his answer that he revived all the four brothers and said you i give, allow you all the four of them to be uh, born again and let them live their life so that is the story which is of this yaksha samvad 
but what i want to emphasize in terms of agility what can we learn both alexander as well as yudhishthir showed great confidence in the face of challenge they had great observation and listening alexander understood that i have to see that the knot is open i don't have to unravel it i can open it in whichever way listening dharmaraj listened to everything that the yaksha said full of hope and positivity they never let go they never felt that there is no solution they were solution oriented and they were people who believed in meaningful dialogue so that is what uh, is the importance of agility in today's times and this is the lesson which you can learn from these two stories agility enables success to change because of the vuka world remember what things are going to change continuously we don't know what is going to happen in another two months another one month tomorrow what mr modi will come on television and announce we don't know what mr uddhav thakre will do so we will require agility to get success through change so to end this agility part i want to show you this thing which i received recently of ratan tata very nice words he says experts are predicting a huge downfall of the economy due to the corona i do not know how much i don't know much about these experts but i know for sure that they do not know anything about the value of human motivation and determined efforts human motivation and determined efforts can overcome the biggest of the challenges so ratan tata says don't believe in the experts because the experts told us that after the second world war japan khatam ho jayega it will not survive but japan rose and gave a challenge to america in terms of its economy israel when israel was formed experts said all around surrounded by muslim countries israel will not survive but israel not only survived they are actually flowering they are doing very well this aerodynamically the bumble bee should not be able to fly experts say that its size of the body compared to the strength of its wings is disproportionate so scientifically by calculation the weights should not be able to take the weight of the uh, the wings sorry the wings should not be able to take the weight of the body and hence the bumble bee should not fly but the bumble bee doesn't know science so it flies so don't believe in the experts 1983 nobody believed that india would win the world cup wilma rudolph she was born with a defect in her leg when she was born and the doctors said that she will not be able to walk her mother told her that you will walk she believed her mother and she won four gold medals at the track events in the olympics so don't believe the experts arunima sinha my personal favorite example a multiple amputee with a broken uh, backbone climbed the everest not only climbed the everest she has climbed the highest peaks of all the five continents in the world so don't believe the experts huh? have your own uh, clarity have your own um, agility have your own vision have your own understanding and if you have a good vision if you have an understanding if you have clarity and if you have agility you will do well all the pictures on this slide are people whom you can recognize very easily none of them were born with a silver spoon in their mouth yeah? they had to face difficulties azim prem ji he was 21 he was studying in stanford he was doing his engineering and he read in the news imagine reading the news that his father has died he immediately came back and that time wipro was a, a sunflower company it was making vanaspati ghee from there he has created uh, sort of the empire of wipro and software kiran mujumdar shaw she was a gold medalist in brewing from australia her father was a master brewer told her to go into brewing she went to australia studied that but when she came back people told her brewing is a mass is a man's job those ladies who are 
on this call and listening to this please hear this very carefully everybody told her that that's a man's job and she was not going to be able to become a brewer so she applied and got a master brewer job in ireland so she was about to leave at that time she met a person and then who was into making enzymes biocon and she started this company biocon and biocon on the first day when it opened uh, on the bourses it clocked 1 billion us dollars market cap and she owns 70% of the company yeah uh, narayan murthy karsan patel i don't need to tell you the stories of each of these and cyrus punawala are all these people are people who have let their performance speak volumes and the perfume of their performance has gone far beyond their job can we raise our game to that level can we do something better really do something by which we are able to make a lasting impression on the world so my last two two uh, slides what will you be will you be fragile somebody who breaks down from volatility whenever there is a challenge he collapses and crumbles or will you be resilient like the phoenix who burns itself on the ashes and rises but he rises as another phoenix gets a new birth or will you be anti fragile and in anti fragile the example is that of the hydra this was one of the challenges of hercules and when hydra had eight heads it differs which book you are reading some say eight heads some say 12 heads but multiple heads and this monster when hercules was told to fight it whenever he cut one head another head grew so in diversity the hydra was able to become even more ferocious even more difficult and even stronger so will we be like the hydra and given this uh, big challenge which is there convid in front of us will we emerge stronger will we become better will we become more resilient so the thing which i want to leave these thoughts with you and this is a question which you have to solve because remember what veta asked vikramaditya if you cannot solve problems why would the world need you yes there are problems yes there are difficulties yes things are very challenging but we need to be able to come out of it so the last question of the poll will this new perspective of muka help you remember earlier it was volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous instead of that i have told you look on muka as having a vision and developing understanding bringing clarity and agility will this new perspective help you yes no or not sure vinoti can you please launch the poll Okay, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Can we have the results, please? Oh, <laughs> very good. Everybody feels that yes, this will help. I'm so happy. You have made me feel very good because my time has been well spent, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for this vote of confidence. and i can tell you challenges will be there but remember problems are the sign that you are alive anything that does not kill us will only make us stronger i am remembering the old new negro spiritual we shall overcome hum honge kamyab ek din zarur hum honge kamyab if we stay together so with the world will bloom again and you have everything that can take you to the top so keep going don't worry life is great challenges are the thing which will keep you sharp have a great time and thank you very much for a very patient hearing
Thank you very I much. My email ID is here. In case anybody wants to write it down and write to me, I'll send you the presentation. Um, thank you very much, Vikas, for that interesting presentation. We can we are getting feedback on the chat as well about how people have really enjoyed the session. Um, anybody who has any questions, uh, anything they would like to ask. Um, as I told you earlier, Vikas uh, is an HR expert so and a very, very senior person in the industry. So any of your doubts, any of your concerns that you would like to share or ask, please feel free to do so. Either you can unmute yourself and ask a question directly. Um, if not, if you would rather type it out, uh, Minoti and I are here to moderate it for you. So anybody who has any questions. Um, somebody, uh, Vikas, is asking, what is, uh, could you please give an example of anti-fragility? Uh, before I um, hand over to Vikas to answer that question, um, there is a very, very interesting article by uh, Preeti DeMello, um, one of the diversity in charge from uh, Tata Consultancy, who has spoken very well in a webinar on anti-fragility as well. Uh, please do read her article on LinkedIn. If you just type anti-fragility plus Preeti, P -R -E -E -T -I, you will get her article. Do try to read it. Uh, Vikas, over to you. Sure. Um, the example which comes to my mind for anti-fragility uh, is Domino's Pizza. <laughs> Some of you may be surprised, but uh, just think about it. What is the business that Domino's Pizza is in? I'm telling you, they are not in the business of making pizza. They are in e-commerce business. They consider themselves as a firm which will be able to deliver pizza to each and everybody, whoever wants it anywhere else in the world. So they think of themselves as a logistics company. So this is an example of anti-fragility where you redefine your model or think about Uber Eats or think about, you know, what is happening today. Uber is a, uh, it's a company which is basically into uh, cabs, right? Car service. Why should they get into Eats? So whenever you redefine, whenever you're faced with challenges and you redefine your business model and do things very, very differently, that is what is anti-fragile. One very old example, Mere time ka hai, forgive me for that, but one very fantastic example in the past is when first the Xerox machines started in India. Okay? When Xerox machines started, you may be surprised, but the Xerox machines were the size of uh, literally a dining table. You know, they were big machines. They were very heavy. They were very complex. And they were very expensive. So, Xerox realized that try as much as you can, they were not able to get people to buy it. So what did they do? They decided that they will put a free machine, Siemens. I worked for Siemens in Worli. So they came to our office in Worli and said, we are giving you a free machine. So what is the revenue model? As many copies, there is a counter inside as many copies as you take, we will charge you based on that once a month, our man will come, look at how many copies you have taken and we will charge you for so many copies taken. Don't buy, don't buy the machine. Don't pay us for the machine. Obviously, in the per copy rate, they will be charging depreciation and everything of the machine. Right? So this is anti-fragility. Another very beautiful example of today, which is coming up is Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce, everybody, we know them for cars, right? But they are basically a very, very big manufacturer of jet engines. Now, in a plane, what is the most expensive thing? It is the jet engine. People were not buying jets, new jets, because the engines are very expensive. Rolls-Royce said, we will give you engines free. 
we will keep a track of how many miles you have flown and we will charge based on those miles. So this is anti-fragility. You see that wherever there is a challenge, you think of a solution which actually takes you to a higher level and gives you a very different perspective and experience. So that is what is anti -fragile. I hope I have answered your question. Any other questions, anybody? That was the only question I saw on chat. Is there anybody else who has uh, any questions? When there are no questions, there can be two ways to interpret this. One is I've been too good. And so I have explained everything so well that there are no questions. Or secondly, you know, uh, it's been so bad that people don't know what to ask. I am a pessimist, so I think it is more of the latter. I don't think that I'm too good. So I hope that I have confused you. And because of that, you are not asking any questions. But the poll has revealed otherwise. The poll has said that all of us are going to apply. Most of us agree with whatever you've redefined as we come. And I can see that also from the feedback on the chat. Yes, so if there are no more sessions, I would like to make an, uh, sorry, there are no more questions. I would like to uh, make an announcement and uh, then close the session. Uh, the announcement is that uh, we are running a webinar for students on how to um, keep your digital footprint um in a manner that is effective um so that you really don't rub the corporate uh, members the wrong way even before you get into the industry um right this is based on the feedback of the industry uh, our own observations in teaching and our own interactions with the industry so um people who are there you can always tell your friends any students, any teachers on the group, I can see a few. Uh, you are most welcome to tell your students. Um, so that session would be tomorrow at 11 in the morning. Uh, also on the 24th, we are doing a general open session on communicating more effectively in writing. Um, and that would be open for corporate houses, um, for um, academicians and students. So please do keep looking on for the announcements. Uh, if you have enjoyed Vikash Rodka's session, um, Lina Barshikar has invited him to speak on leadership uh, on Saturday the 26th, is it? Or whatever is the Saturday of that week um, at in the evening. So 27th. Okay, 27th, it's Saturday the 27th. So that announcement will be uh, circulated. Do keep joining us, do keep writing. Um, and okay, there is somebody just as we are about to sign off, who's asking how has the VUCA approach changed the role of the leader in COVID-19 times? Okay, um, see the COVID times are a very big challenge for everybody. It was something which nobody had experienced. Same way leaders had also not experienced. So they were also not prepared for the types of challenges which will happen. But how that role has changed, I think one very major thing, whichever companies I work with, whichever managers I talk to, whichever people I interact with, what uh, they say, two or three things have come become very, very important. One is the trust factor. Trust between the employee and the organization and the manager as a representative of the organization. That was something which you know we were not too much worried about. We were meeting once in a while. We were able to have a chat, have a cup of coffee. If thoda jada up down ho gaya, to bhi hum sambal lete the. But now in remote, because of COVID, the trust factor has become very very critical. This is especially true because of work from home when do i worry yaar wo ghar pe hai to kuch kaam kar raha hai ya sirf bacche ko doodh pila raha hai you know, these are really questions which some of the managers are asking 
and organizations have to teach them how to trust the employee and not go into those areas. So one is trust. The second uh, one which uh, sort of role has changed significantly is a word which I used in the middle, which is compassion, right? Compassion is something doing the right thing, which is right for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I did not mention it because it makes me a little emotional, but just think about compassion in the way of what is, how society at large has treated the migrant labor. No organization can survive without the temporary and the uh, casual and the uh, sort of, you know, apprentices and those sort of people. They were the migrant labor. And as soon as there was a problem, we have sort of not looked after their interests at all. So that is something which has caused this migration. And now if suppose tomorrow Modi says that I take responsibility, open all your companies, we won't be able to manufacture because all our migrant labor has gone away and we have to wait for them to come back. So compassion is something which is, which is being taught in the post COVID times. We have to be far more compassionate when the, in all our dealings, whether it is with the milkman, whether it is with the security or whether it is with my employee. You know? So I think trust, compassion. And third thing, which I will say is that manager as a harbinger of hope as leaders, as seniors, just as ghar mein jo bade bude hai, unho ne taakat dikhani hai, vaise hi in organizations, managers have to spread positivity and hope. That is the other thing which, so these are all soft aspects which have come up. It's no longer performance pay, it is no longer command and control, it is more of uh, carrying people together through trust, compassion and providing hope. Um, there is another question, Vikas, which says, as an HR student, I would like to ask, will there be any different approach while recruiting a student based on soft skills or technical skills? Um, see, firstly, I am sorry to be a prophet of doom. You may kill me or hate me for this. But first and foremost, we have to understand that recruitment will be affected by this whole thing significantly. Whatever webinars I am attending or hearing my ex my people speak, everybody knows that we are going through a valley. It will take one, about one and a half years to two years for the economy to grow. So recruitment, you will have to make yourself that much more capable, that much more better to be able to land a job. And technical skills, in my opinion, are there. They are always a basic level. But what will make a big difference is really the soft skills that we talked about. It's really the team working. It is really your ability to collaborate. That is what will make a big difference. Are there um, any other questions? Um, yeah, there is one more question, Vikas. Um, are HR departments of different organizations ready to accept experienced professionals from an altogether different industry? If yes, will they be open to train this candidate who is experienced but a fresher for that particular industry? Do you want me to repeat the question? No, no, I heard the question, but I have a clarificatory thing. For which, fun is it for any function or is it for recruitment into HR? That is what I want to ask. No, it looks like for any function. Okay. See, fundamentally, organizations and industry understands that a person who's coming out of an MBA school 
is not a finished product they need to be groomed they need to be trained they need to be prepared to start contributing so training is a given you take any good organization which recruits people they do uh, give training to the people so i don't think that is a problem the issue is more from the experienced people in terms of their own fitment see unfortunately i have been an hr person for 34 years and i have done a lot of recruitment what i have found is that the experienced people come with a different expectation they themselves come with a chip on their shoulder saying i have worked as a shop floor supervisor or i have worked as xyz for two years before doing an mba so my two years experience should be counted please understand that as experienced people we should be ready to also join at that trainee level join at the first floor learn the ropes and then grow within how that my experience will help me is because i have two years earlier experience i will be able to hit the road running i'll be able to contribute faster i'll be able to prove my the uh, prove my value better but i don't think uh, organizations hesitate to take experienced people except for the fact that they expect a higher salary or a higher grade or a higher position based on experience which is not yet proven once it is proven why will organization not give you that opportunity and move you faster uh because there is one more question um how um how has how is the vuka perspective going to help industries post the covid 19 pandemic uh okay so so basically this was what i was basically trying to talk about if you look at the earlier perspective volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous all the four words are scary you don't know what to do you know complex hai ambiguous hai main kahan jaun kya karu you know this is what uh, the earlier vuka world was by talking about vision understanding clarity and agility bob johansen has actually given a direction in which organizations can use this concept so most good companies have vision have a written down vision but unfortunately many companies i have seen it lies on the wall like this painting there or it is there on a uh, table of the manager no it has to vision has to enter the heart of the employee it has to guide the behavior of the employee you know so so they will have action to uh, propagate the vision to see that everybody understand everybody operates from the vision understanding understanding the customer is most important today tomorrow you will not be able to visit the customer so often as you used to do in the past how do i gather better consumer intelligence and customer knowledge by remaining behind my screen organizations will have to think about that you know so these are the ways in which vuka will help because if they practice this new perspective it is a very positive oriented thing which will really give them better results that's my faith agility sorry agility now there is so much of change happening all around unless you are agile you will be left behind all together you will not know what happened at all so the, the continuous learning is something which the employees also have to do and the organizations also have to do they will really uh, have to you know this uh, ck prallad uh, has uh, talked about a very fantastic concept in his new book called uh, the new innovation uh, it's a very very short but very beautiful thought he says n equal to 1 and r equal to g n equal to 1 and r equal to g what does it mean that means you have to think of every employee or every uh, interest group or every customer or every uh, sort of supplier or every vendor as one 
he is the world to you you have to look after him as though he is the only person n is equal to 1 those of you who have read and studied statistics i don't have to explain n is equal to 1 right the world is one you have to think of him as the entire world and what is r equal to g resources are global today in the vuka world one advantage is you can pick up a phone and get the best of the technology from japan china taiwan korea anywhere right resources are global teams are working together like that there are collaboration teams whether you take google or you take microsoft their their collaboration teams are working all over the globe but they are working seamlessly resources are global which is why they are able to innovate and bring out things faster and faster so do try to catch up that book of prahlad but i found this concept absolutely world shattering n is equal to 1 r equal to g simple to remember any other questions so thank you vikas uh, for that wonderful session and for answering all the questions um vikas always loves to interact with uh, students he is very very fond of academics and academicians so anybody who wants to reach out to him can do so by writing him an email thank you minoti for all the back end work uh, in coordinating managing hosting and uh, you know making this possible so thank you from on behalf of kbs uh, to the entire audience who has been present here i'm sure that the takeaways are going to be useful for us in our journey ahead so thank you stay safe have a great day ahead thank you preeti thank you minoti pleasure 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 minoti you could close the session now yeah